Hello everybody and welcome to the third video in the series. This time we will be talking about the animator, the animator controller, and blend trees. So an animator controls all the animations in an object or player character in a game. Um, the controller needs an avatar, so like we talked about before, this is like the bone structure and uh, the rig that tells it how to move, and the animator controls what those mo movements are. So to create a new animator controller, um, we already have one here, but if you had your own project, you would go to anim uh, add component, you type in animator, and it's this one right here, and that will bring up new animator, and then it will ask you for an animator controller and an avatar put into it. Uh, to create a new animator controller, you right click into the project files, create, and scroll down to animator controller. I'm gonna click on that just to show you guys. Uh, it's gonna give you this blank uh, state here. Everyone's gonna have an any state exit and entry, and you right click to create a new state. New state would, let's say, be idle, for example. And it's automatically going to go into the state from uh, its awake state. So entry right into your first state, and then whatever motion you put here. So for what we're, we were given, we have, let's see, human crouch, idle, um, human idle. So let's take this uh, play button square here. This is going to be any animation is going to have that symbol. We're going to drag and drop that into the motion. What that's going to do, we double click on it and hit play. This default avatar here will play the idle animation for us. So that's going to be played on a loop every time we hit play. What we were given, and it did a lot of the work for us, was this third person uh, animation controller. And in this, we have grounded, airborne, and crouching. So in the crouching state, as you've seen before, crouching around, airborne is anytime we jump, and grounded is the blend tree that we were given. What a blend tree is, you double click on grounded, is a bunch of animations all set to different uh, float values controlled by parameters. So when we hit play, if we run forward, we're at a full one run speed. And if we barely move a little bit, we're going to be at more of a walk. And what this does, not a play for this, is on our little example here, as we transition to a walking state or a running state, start back at zero. Zero is the idle. Place that here. At position 0.5, He's going to be in a walking state. And at position one, it's going to be a running state. There's also a lean, or a turn left, turn right, and a lean right, a lean left. So what the blend tree does is, as you're getting input from code or your movement code, uh, depending on your velocities, it will take it from a zero to one scale and apply these animations directly to that and blend between them seamlessly so it looks really smooth. Now what if you got all these and you didn't really like, let's say you didn't like the walk or something. You could simply grab any animation you had and just replace it right there and it'll blend between those animations. So let's try this out with a new character. We will 
try out the going to the third person prefabs. We're gonna bring in our AI character. Let's it's already set to zero. We're going to slide it back here. And let's turn it around a little bit. So once again, we got Ethan. Pretty lame. Um, this character is a AI has an AI attached to it, and what AI we're using is the Nav Mesh agent. And before we can use the Nav Mesh agent, we need to bake a Nav Mesh. So up here by Inspector, you'll see a Navigation tab. We're going to click on that and then click on bake. What that's going to do is bake anything in the terrain that's walkable. So if you look to see up here, any uh, angles over 45 degrees is unwalkable. Anything less than that can be walked upon. And as long as it's connected, the nav mesh agent can walk on it. Another thing that it gives us in the standard asset pack is the ability to have a target. And that target is under the AI character controller script. So the target we want for this is our player. We're going to drag him down. And now that we have baked the nav mesh, our nav mesh agent can patrol towards our player. So if we hit play, it's gonna run at us and jump because of how fast he's going. So we can drag his speed down. We don't want to run too fast. And do maybe a 0.5 and bring his acceleration down. And let's increase his stopping distance so that he isn't just running into us the whole time. We'll do maybe like five units. Save that, give it a shot. No, he's still doing it. So what that tells me is that it's not a speed issue. It is a nav mesh issue. So we're gonna go back into navigation. Uh, the step height's probably a little too high. I'll drop it down to like point, point 0.1 or something. That's where the nav mesh floor is, so it was, it was a little bit high, and he, he kind of got caught in this fall, constant falling motion. Um, it's going to get mad at us at the degrees, uh, his step height and his slope aren't compatible, so we'll drop the slope. He can walk up a little bit lower, something like that, and then let's rebake it. And now the nav mesh is a little smoother, uh, a little closer to the actual ground, and he can't go in some weird spots. So now that that's done, let's give this a shot. And he's walking. All right, looks good. It's not falling anymore. Uh, the stop distance a little far away. We want him to be able to get close to attack us. So we'll make that into a one, one unit away. We'll keep walking and stop when he gets right to us. A little push, but that's not bad. Okay, so Ethan's a little lame. So we're gonna switch him up like we did before. Let's go back into Mixamo and let's have, what should we have? Let's have ninjas versus, ninjas versus zombies. He's a little too cartoony. Um, let's see if we got another option here. The zombie's pretty good. Oh yeah, okay. So we'll have ninjas versus zombies. And this time, let's bring in an animation to put into our blend tree. When you click animations, it has hundreds and hundreds of animations to choose from. But that walk didn't really look like a zombie walk. So let's look up zombie. See what they have here. They got a different idol. They got a crawl. 
Look for a zombie walk, maybe. There's a good zombie walk. Okay, so let's grab that. Nice, so looks good. Um, let's download this. And we are going to download this with skin this time, since we have a new um, a new model we want to use. Same with FBX for Unity. Frames per second, 30 is fine. And we're going to hit download. Zombie at Zombie Walk. Good. Let's go into Characters and Save. And then back into Unity for the import. Characters. We now have our zombie and we will open the refab. I'm going to delete Ethan again. Sorry, Ethan. And we're going to bring the zombie in. Now, all in one swoop, let's do what we did before. Go into the model. Let's extract textures to our materials folder. All right, it looks good. Do the fix now. And does anything look weird? The materials look a little off. I'm not sure if that'll fix it, but we can try it. Let's extract materials as well. Didn't seem to change too much, but that's okay. All right, uh, lastly, go back into rig, switch the rig to humanoid, and create from this model. And finally, grab the avatar that we got with our zombie and replace Ethan's. Okay, back. We got our zombie in the scene. Let's play it real quick. Okay, it all worked out. We did it properly, but he's still walking normal. So we're going to go back into our zombie FBX package we got, and this time it came along with a zombie walk. So we want that. How we're going to do that is we're going to create our own blend tree. We're not going to recreate all of this ourselves, but what we can do is go back to the base layer of our original blend tree. We can copy grounded, since we don't need the jump and the crouch for this guy. Just copy that one. We can go our assets, and we don't have our own animation folder, but let's create one. Animation. Inside that, we can create our animator controller. We're going to call this zombie animator controller. Okay. Now we're left with a blank slate here. I'm going to right click and paste our grounded state. What that should do. Give us the same blend tree. We open up the blend tree and go back down to our where our humanoid walk was. Go into our characters and pull in our zombie walk. And then close that out. Make sure zombie walk is in there. And Lastly, we need to replace this third person animator controller with the one we just made. And save. Now let's try it out and see what see if it works. Nice. That looks like a zombie walk to me. Okay, he's sliding a little bit. And that be that's because the animation is not looping. So what we need to do is go back into the 
where the animation was originally. Original animation is in our zombie FBX file. Open it up. And up here where it says zombie walk, go to edit. For edit, we're going to scroll down and click loop time. That way, once it gets to the end, and loop back around and continue walking. Save that. All right, let's apply that first. Save and try it again. There we go. Now we got a the impending doom of our zombie. All right. Now that we have these. Uh, that's pretty good for this video. It's getting a little long already. Um, in the next video, I will show you how to add a animation to an existing tree. So we're going to explore how to maybe attack the zombie or what that would look like for our ninja here. I hope you guys found this useful and see you in the next video.